this episode of Bolt on Love, we're going from this to this. Thanks for checking on station. For the next 15 mics, we'll be showing how to make a custom set of 1911 gun grips. It all started with a set of plans I downloaded from the interwebs, looking for inspiration from the world-famous VS-31 Topcats and the Mighty Warhoof. So this is my design intent. And just so you know, design intent is a buzzword, meaning I hope this will work. My MDP, or Master Diabolical Plan, was to capture three design elements. My side number, Alpha Golf 707, a set of machined aircrew wings and brass, and the iconic VS-31 Squadron logo. Before we can get started on the fun stuff, we have to machine a through hole and the counter bores into the back side of the grips. We will also need to machine a 3D contour for the safety. As most of you know, it can't be a Last Bastion Labs video without a fixture. I mean, we don't take a dump around here without a fixture. We will also need to machine four low profile screws to hold the grips in place. They need to be flat. If the tool touches the screw, trust me, it gets very interesting very quickly. Sorry, I don't have any video of that outcome. So at this point, I've done the easy part. I've talked about it. So let's kick the tires and light the fire and hit cycle start. Our adventure begins with a hunk of 6061 T6 aluminum and a half inch three flute end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. Hashtag not sponsored. To my regular subscribers, you may have noticed that I've rolled in a little background music. As I've stated before for a long time, my only subscribers were my mother and her friends. One of them told me one day, I don't like to comment on videos, but they're very nice, but there's a lot of machine noise. Well, I get it, it's a machining video, but I decided maybe I would try something different to make it more enjoyable for maybe everyone instead of just machinists. To me, this music fits. I'm creating something. Something I've dreamed about for a long time, and something that didn't exist before now. And that's really what this channel is about. Design and build an entirely new world, one part at a time. And now for a quick test fit. Looks like it checks 4.0 on deck. Off camera, I added a little bling because even fixtures deserve to look cool. I'm removing the bulk of the cap with an end mill and running my finish pass with a Tormach Superfly cutter. I'm not really sure that this music foreshadows busting off a tap in the work, but today was my lucky day.
onto the screws. I'm going to breeze through this part. I've already documented this process in my screwing around on the mill video. Feel free to check it out. My apologies, Mr. Autofocus was experiencing some technical difficulties today. I did wind up having to chase the threads with a die. I thought I would give you a hint about an upcoming video. I've shown two Easter eggs in this video. You've already seen one. Hint, it's not a gun part, nor is it a set of aircrew wings. If you think you know what it is, leave a comment in the comment section. The first one to get it right will get an official Last Bastion Labs decal. Family, friends, and especially my mom's friends, are not eligible. I know what you're thinking. Only a real moron would make exactly the number of screws that he needed for a fixture. Crying out loud, you have a Tormach. You're demonstrating how easy it is to make screws in the privacy of your own home. What if you lose one? I know, finally, on to the grips. For this op, we'll start by facing off the back of the grip adding the through holes and the counter bore. Someone apparently forgot to hit record while we were machining the grip safety. I've clamped the blanks to the fixture. Off camera I machined the counter bore. This will allow me to install the three bronze screws that I just made and one pan head screw. As it turns out, a pan head screw will work. And before somebody points out, yes, I know that is not a pan screw. Thanks for noticing, Art. And there he is, right there. We will clear away most of the material using a single flute router bit from Harvey Tools. It's a great tool, it's not cheap, and not sponsored. I'm running an adaptive tool path with a very shallow depth of cut. That's how I'm able to get those little tiny steps in the part, which means that the ball cutter has less material to remove when we get to the parallel path or smoothing operation. That last bit of wood remaining on the right side of the grip, it's a little too tall. This winds up kicking me in the stern section. I'll show you in a little while. In order to remove those little steps, I'm using a ball end mill cutter running about 45 degrees from the steps. I find this leaves a great surface finish. Every time the cutter moves over into the work, it's moving five thousandths of an inch, or we call that the step over. Five thousand might be a little excessive, but wow did it give a great surface finish, there was almost no sanding. For the checkering, I'm using a tapered ball end mill cutter from Amazon. With the checkering complete, I run a trace operation around the perimeter of the checkering. I move the cutter in about one thousandths of an inch just to clean up the ends of the checkering. For the last operation on the grips, we cut in the side number and detail the logo. And with that, the grips are done. I'll have to say I'm not entirely unpleased.
Moving on to some tiny little air crew wings. I'm not going to go into a lot of details here. The cutters get really, really small and it's difficult to capture what's going on. The bluing allows me to see if I've broken a tool. I finish the wings with a 2D contour op and I add some tabs to hold it all together. You're looking at two hours of machine time. And what you're looking at was my fourth attempt. Just to give you an idea of the size, here's a quarter. Now go call your mama and tell her today you saw a real naval air crewman. <laughs> Just kidding. You can use my cell phone. Sorry, old Navy joke. So our next engineering challenge is to figure out how to make these wings really, really thin. The trouble here is there's not a flat surface anywhere on the wings and there's not a whole lot to hold on to. So here's my master diabolical plan. I'm going to take a piece of stock and try super gluing the wings to the stock and hope that this works. Normally we do this operation with a fly cutter, but my strategy for this is to use a quarter inch end mill cutter and slowly work it around the part, never letting the cutter get off the edge of the part. This way, hopefully, I don't pick up an edge and then send the wings sailing across the mill. I'm going to try Loctite 620. One, because I need something that will fill the gaps, and two, because of the heat resistance properties. I gotta tell you, I'm not really sure how this is gonna work out. If they do go sailing off, I hope they land next to the screw I'm missing. Okay, I'm just as surprised as you are. So a little bit of heat with a torch to separate them from the block and an overnight bath in acetone and voila. For our next trick, we've got to bend those wings so that they will conform to the curvature of the grip. Here's another wackadoodle idea. I'm going to use my lathe centering tool and some O1 tool steel that I've turned down to roughly match the diameter I need, taking into account spring back. I will spare you having to watch me fiddle around with this for about seven to eight minutes and just cut to the chase. Well, I think that's close enough. You have no idea how satisfying that was. I gotta tell you, this victory really belongs to the Tormach. This project was totally the right project for the 440. Now the only thing to do is muck them up during the finishing process. <laughs> like that's never happened before. While everything was still set up in the Tormach 440, I went ahead and cut a set of grips for lasering. I'm sending them to Mark at NC Engraving. If you're into amazing work, you should check out his channel. Really?
Remember that part I talked about earlier of kicking my stern section? If you look closely around the screw holes, you can see the tear out from the mill cutter. I've since fixed that in the toolpath, but these grips will have kind of that weathered veteran look to them. Now I know what you're thinking. A set of dome screws with U.S. Navy around the perimeter finished with a blue oxide coating would really be the ticket, Cricket. Maybe Santa will bring me a rotary brooch from Tormach for Christmas. Well, I've had enough fun for one project. As always, thank you very much for your time, and if you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing and hit the like button. This is Tim from Last Bastion Labs, your safe space for makers.